Go, blimey, governor. Hey and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name is Ruben and this is my review for Amazon's original series uh, in partnership with Legendary called Carnival Row. So Carnival Row stars Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne. The series is set in a Victorian fantasy world filled with mythological immigrant creatures whose exotic homelands were invaded by the empires of man. So Amazon sent us the screeners, thank you so much Amazon. and. To say that this is one of Amazon's flagship series, I think would be accurate. They have a couple of original titles that they're in partnership with others with making. This is one that I was really highly anticipating to see because fantasy is my jam, man. I love all fantasy, Lord of the Rings, you know, anything like that. Uh, with creatures and, and fae, I love to watch it. So I was really excited. I don't know any of the original content or anything is based off. I'm coming to this with fresh eyes, uh, which I'm glad about because sometimes that can mar your expectations of how whether it crosses platforms well enough. One of the things I was worried about was, uh, well, both really, was Alanda Bloom and Cara Delevingne as the leads in this fantasy mystical world because I've seen uh, Cara Delevingne was in one of my most expected films of that time, uh, Valerian and a Thousand Planets. I love Luc Besson, so I was really expecting that to be great. And unfortunately, her take on the character from Valerian wasn't great and it wasn't well received. So I was kind of, kind of stepping back. Uh, not sure what to expect from this. So anyway, we had Orlando Bloom and I know he's done fantasy as well, but sometimes he can be a bit hit or miss in whatever he is in. But I can breathe a sigh of relief and say these two main characters are fantastic. It's almost kind of a Romeo and Juliet story. So you've got two lovers. So Orlando Bloom plays a detective, a human detective, Rycroft, a philo straight, and they kind of call him Philly. That's his nickname. And Delevingne plays Vigenette Stone Moss. Name. Phineas Stone Moss. So this story is basically about two worlds clashing. So where in our Victorian time you would have the, the, the separation of the classes, um, they've taken that and put that within the mystical fantasy land. It's not Earth, but it's very similar. They even have the same swear words, like the C words, which my mum would wash my mouth out with soap if I ever said it. Um, and they speak like they're like born and raised uh, uh, young British lads, like governor, all right, mate, that kind of thing. It's all very much seeped into the language and even the culture. And, the, and then you have the fantasy creatures, which also have a variety of accents. And so it's this culture clashes. Humans are very much the 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 more important race and the the elves and all the fantasy creatures the centaurs the i mean there is a range which i was really surprised by i was expecting it just to be maybe like a couple but i was so happy and very happily surprised to see the amount of range of uh, fantasy creatures depicted uh, within their class but the the fantasy creatures are definitely in the lower class and so they have jobs like you you get a uh, a brothel for fairies and so get fairy prostitutes and um, thieves and murderers and monsters and it's all of that in these two worlds clashing at the same time you have this detective um, who uh, forms a relationship or has formed a relationship unnatural so Philly and Vigenette have formed this relationship in the past and a lot of the language uh, you, you kind of have to catch up with it. You're kind of thrust into the world. And at the same time, there's a lot of this history and past. They talk about a past war that really kind of shaped their future. And in fact, a couple of the episodes, you actually go and get to see what happens in the past, uh, which I think is great. You change location from London and you go and be a part of the war. There was creatures I was... Uh, very, it's very hard for me not to do any spoilers, but there were creatures that I wasn't expecting to see. Um, I don't know why I should totally <laughs> have expected them, but sometimes they put things in this series that I was like, wow, I didn't expect that. That's very nice. It's well done. But by far, the best thing about this series is how grounded the storyline is. So you could think to yourself, I mean, I, th I, I would think it's even more grounded than, you know, Lord of the Rings. You could think to yourself that, well, wait a minute, this is fantasy. How am I going to relate to this? You know, there's fairies and werewolves and, you know, all sorts of things running around. I don't want to be on the human side because they, te they tend to be the bad guys. Uh, but the best thing about this is how well the language is integrated into the different kind of classes, the way the 
the clothes are suited to the classes where the storyline puts you in the adventure with the characters and you it follows them so closely uh, that you can't help but feel emotionally engaged and it took me about half an hour to kind of get to grips with what the story was trying to tell us to figure out what this world is there's some quirky language and words that they use for each other like pix for pixie but that's represented of like a derogatory term for the fairies so you are immersed into this world it kind of reminded me of firefly in a bit where they have a language that you have to get to grips with and i love that i think this this works so well they will never accept us as i said i was so surprised at how grounded the characters were that feels relatable even though they are fantasy characters i think orlando plays the detective so well charged with finding the man responsible for these attacks he just it feels like he's at home sometimes you see characters walk onto screen and you breathe a sigh of relief in yourself because you're like, oh yeah, that feels right. That feels good. That feels solid. And Delavine, she's got a really thick accent, but I think she plays her character amazingly. And so I was so happy to see her because I know she is a great actress. Actress. There was just been a couple of stuff I've seen of her that I didn't like. Which left me in the ashes of my homeland. But I think together on screen, it's great. The story itself um, develops quite quickly. So you have this overarching storyline, which I'm not going to go into because that would be doing spoilers. But really, the core premise of the characters and the and this kind of subplot is this love story between the two and whether they can work out their issues. At the same time, you have this politics and monstrous arc um, that's going on. And so you have this, you, you want to figure out what's going on with the detective. At the same time, you're kind of on, the, on a rebel side because you have these two worlds clashing. And I think it's fantastic. I really enjoyed all the the fantasy creatures as well i think they all look really great they have the prosthetics and makeup and all that looks great when they are flying that that was one of the things i was concerned about that the flying with whether it was going to look cg and rubbish it doesn't there are sequences where multiple fairies take to the sky and it just looks so good there was only one occasion where i saw someone land and they almost fell because of their landing and i thought oh that must be wire work but just once the rest of the time i thought it was just really really fun i hope we get loads more seasons like this because i think it's a mixture between peaky blinders and narnia it's like peaky blinders and x-rated narnia uh, with potty mouth and that's not a thing that I ever think I wanted to see or ever knew that I wanted But now that I've seen it, it's amazing I did make the mistake of thinking this was family friendly because I watched the trailer and I thought yeah, that looks alright and then uh, huh. <laughs> My uh, younger son ran upstairs and said yeah I'm not watching that because the sexual scenes in this apart from the language which I don't normally mind my, my son's watching but the sexual scenes in this are pretty graphic I have to say fairy sex with humans and, and other things uh, you don't quite expect to see so graphically they don't shy away from this at all it's almost like they're kind of trying to contest the game of thrones absenteeness so game of thrones is done so this could be amazon's answer i know amazon are going to do a lord of the rings series but this could be amazon's answer for now the for the fantasy fantasy mystical world but grounded so you have great action sequences, great set pieces, a great story, great acting. I'm giving this an A+. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I found almost nothing wrong with it, and I want more. It leaves you wanting more. Let me know in the comments below whether you're excited for this uh, and whether you want more, whether you know more about it. Thanks so much for watching my review. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.